registered in Cyprus, Semfjord transported cement in bulk from a manufacturing plant in Roardal, Denmark, to various ports in Northern Europe. Having loaded cement on the 29th and 30th of December 2014, Semfjord departed Roardal for a passage to Runcorn, UK. The intended route would take the vessel north around Scotland, through the Pentland Firth. As the vessel crossed the North Sea, the weather deteriorated significantly, reducing its speed and delaying the anticipated arrival time. On the morning of the 2nd of January 2015, Semfjord contacted Shetland Coast Guard and reported its intention to pass through the Pentland Firth Voluntary Reporting Zone. Semfjord was last seen by the ferry Pentalina at 12.48 that day. At 13.15 in the outer sound of the Pentland Firth, in the position shown on the left of this chart, Semfjord's automatic identification system transmission ceased. 25 hours later, and 19 miles to the east, in the position shown on the right, Semfjord's upturned hull was spotted by a passing ferry. The discovery of the upturned hull triggered a major search and rescue effort involving helicopters, lifeboats and coast rescue teams. But regrettably none of Semfjord's eight crew were found and the vessel sank late in the evening on the 3rd of January 2015. The only items ever found from the ship were part of Semfjord's rescue boat and one of the life rafts which was discovered about 70 miles east of where the accident happened. MEIB's investigation gathered extensive evidence to determine the causes and circumstances of the accident. This included an underwater survey of the wreck using sonar and cameras to find evidence about what had happened. Additionally, the picture from the Orkney Vessel Traffic Service radar provided critical evidence of the capsize event itself. It showed the capsize was extremely rapid in nature and that waves in the vicinity were also so large that they were detected by the radar system. The MEIB investigation concluded that Semfjord capsized when it encountered violent storm conditions created by a strong tidal stream opposing gale force winds. This combination of factors created atrocious sea conditions that were impassable to small vessels. Evidence from the automatic identification system showed the vessel had slowed down, almost certainly to reduce the effect of pitching and pounding in the heavy seas. But this led to a loss of steerage control and probable capsize to port. The capsize itself would have been made much worse by a shift in the cement cargo when the vessel heeled beyond about 30 degrees. The Pentland Firth is notorious for such conditions, which are well documented in nautical publications and shown on the chart. Thus the MEIB investigation also concluded that this fatal hazard was predictable and could have been avoided. The onboard decision to enter the Firth was a result of insufficient passage planning, an underestimation of the sea conditions and real or perceived commercial pressures to press on with the voyage. Critically, this decision was also underpinned by the experience of a cargo shift when turning across a heavy sea when trying to avoid the Firth about three months prior to the accident. MEIB's investigation examined the vessel's stability, a critical factor for cement carriers. There was insufficient evidence to determine Semfjord's exact stability condition at the time of the capsize. However, shortcomings in stability management were identified, including the fact that the vessel had not been loaded properly in accordance with procedures for cement cargoes, potentially increasing its vulnerability to capsize. The crew did not have time to issue a distress message because of the rapid nature of the capsize, and the accident went unnoticed ashore because, although Semfjord had reported to the Coast Guard that it was entering the Pentland Firth Voluntary Reporting Zone, the Coast Guard did not require vessels to report that they were leaving the zone. The MIB investigation also established that Semfjord was at sea with significant shortcomings relating to onboard safety equipment. This was only possible because of exemptions from key safety regulations that had been approved by the flag state, in this case Cyprus. No consideration appears to have been given to keeping the vessel in port to repair the safety shortcomings, 
Instead, Semfjord was kept at sea. Since the accident, the vessel's managers and the Cyprus authorities have made a series of changes to vessel management and procedures. Nevertheless, MAIB has made several safety recommendations to a number of agencies to improve safety, in particular for cement carriers and in the Pentland Firth area. This tragic accident is a stark reminder of the hazards mariners can face at sea and the measures necessary to plan and undertake every voyage safely. <laughs>